Now I'm joined by the man himself, Scott Hunter, has flown all the way from the United States. He is the program manager for the .NET team in the US. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm glad to be here. How, how's it been? Uh, the conference or Madrid or well, both? Your, your, your talk. Oh, the talk was amazing. So, so uh, you know, looking at the future of .NET, uh, we're just about to ship 2.1. Mm -hmm. it, it RTMs tomorrow, so we were telling everybody about 2.1 RTMing. Um, but 3.0 bits. Did, did we get the scoop on that? You did get the scoop on that. You're oh, the, the first conference that uh, we've actually told the RTM date for. Right. Um, so you guys got the scoop. If the conference was one day er later, you would have had the exclusive ah, wow. of the <laughs> announce and everything. Okay. Uh, but we're really happy about the 2.1 bits. They're, you yeah. know, they're, they're faster than the 2.0 bits. Um, it's, we, we think for ASP.NET and EF, We've added almost all the parity we have, we need to have to, for, for older frameworks. And so if you're trying to move to .NET Core, now's the time to do it. It's the best time. We've got uh, great API support for ASP.NET with single, Signal R, um, great support for EF with lazy loading and more. Uh, performance is faster, build times are faster, so it's a, gonna be a great release. Uh, we're really excited about it, but we're already working on both 2.2 uh, which will be later this year, and 3.0, which will be next year. Can you tell us anything about those? Um, the biggest thing would be 3.0, which I talked about in the, in the, at the conference, was we're bringing desktop to .NET Core as well. So we've not had support for building anything other than web apps for the most part. You can build console and web, uh, but our customers really asked. We, we, we did a poll, and the most requested feature was WPF. And so we're bringing WPF to Core, uh, WinForms to core, mm -hmm. um, and we're bringing Entity Framework 6 to core as well. So there's three big frameworks uh, that'll be supported on core in the future, um, and really excited about those. Especially one of the demos I did was, for the first time ever, you can actually build a .NET application and compile it to a single exe, and it contains the framework and everything. So there's, it, does, it requires nothing on the box. Historically, you'd build an app and say, well, I need .NET Framework 4.7.2 on the box. Yeah. Now you can say, here's the app. Mm -hmm. And it requires nothing to be on the box at all. So I think that's going to be, for desktop developers on .NET, that's going to be amazing, not requiring anything on the, uh, I'll give you the example. Okay. Let's say you work in some organization, and the IT has got you on maybe Windows 7, and you're on .NET Framework 4.6.1. Well, that means that as a developer, you can't use the newest features. With this new feature, with .NET Core, you can actually use the latest features of .NET Core and not require your IT to install anything on the machines. So it's going to mean, for the first time ever, desktop developers are not hindered by what their OS is or what their IT has got installed on the machines. They mm -hmm. can just build using the latest, greatest .NET features. So, I so a lot of happy developers out I there. I think so, yeah. So we saw you on stage um, with, with James Montier Magno, yes. and you were demonstrating a live share um, as part of uh, .NET 2.1. Can you tell us a little bit more the, about that? The live share feature is actually a Visual Studio feature, and it's, a, it's, it's an awesome feature. Um, basically what it says is, you know, let's say I'm developing and I want help. Well, what I might do today is I might grab my source code, go and paste it into a forum or a Slack channel uh, somewhere on the internet and wait for a response. In this case, for the first time ever, I can just go invite any of my teammates in. So I've got, uh, like, David Fowler is one of the developers at, in, in Redmond. If I'm struggling on a demo here, I can just add David in, and now we're looking at the code together, um, and I can see where he is, and he can see where I am. We're changing the code together. We can debug it together. Um, and so it's, I think it's going to make developers a lot more productive. Because I imagine the day you, you, you're sick and you can't come in to work, and you might want some help, you're, but, but your teammates aren't there. Now it doesn't matter where you are. You can actually access your teammates or the public. Um, so what I hope for this as well is you go to a Slack channel and say, hey, I don't really understand this API. Uh, and somebody goes, hey, I can help. You paste them a link. Now you're in the, in the, in the code together, working on the code. So it's, I think it's going to bring a new social aspect to, uh, to .NET programming. I was talking to a few people after your keynote. And the, the biggest surprise was I can share code by link. I mean, that is a big thing for developers. I mean, how do you think that's going to change things? I think it's going to change even more than just share by link. It, uh, you don't have to be in the same tool. So James was in Visual Studio on his laptop as mm -hmm. well. He could have been in Visual Studio Code or in the future Visual Studio for Mac. So whether you're in v Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio for Mac, 
you all see the same code. And the, the other crazy thing is I didn't upload my source code to a, to a GitHub account or anything like that. Um, just with a link, you got to see my entire project and all the stuff in it. That, that I think, is amazing. Because mm -hmm. just think, if you really want to do this today, you would either zip the code up and mail the zip to somebody. Well, that's dangerous because now they have your entire project forever. Yeah. Or you put it in GitHub. Once again, they would have your project. They could clone it and have yes. it. Yeah. Um, now it's like one click. Share a link. And none of that setup's ever required. No firewall settings. I mean, it's, uh, the, the simplicity of it is amazing. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the way we develop code. So do you think coding is becoming easier? I mean, you, I, I read a little bit about you. And you started at two startups before starting at Microsoft. I mean, how have you seen a, an evolution in development since that time? I think coding has actually gotten harder. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why. So it used to be, if you're if you coding 15 years ago, you wrote your code in one tech. I'm a C++ developer or a C developer, uh, and you write all your code in C. Um, like I was doing some demos today with ASP.NET. ASP.NET requires me to, um, rec I, I need to know HTML, I need to know CSS, I need to know JavaScript, I need to know .NET. Um, and so more and more, even if, even if you're not even a .NET developer, maybe you're just writing a, a Node.js app with, uh, AngularJS. Well, the number of tools that you actually have to use to stitch that together, you have to know what Webpack is. Mm -hmm. You've got to know what CSS, HTML, JavaScript, you need to know what Angular is. It feels like the number of things that you need to know to be successful today has really grown. Yeah. And that's why we were really excited to show Blazor. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea of Blazor is, uh, it's, it's not the, the main point of it, but one of the things it will help you with is it reduces the amount of tech you have to learn. So in a Blazor.net uh, application, you no longer have to know a JavaScript framework. You don't need, you don't need an Angular, a React, or a Vue. You don't need to know JavaScript. Um, you just need to know .NET. But all the same things that were available, that only were available if you knew JavaScript before, all those events on, uh, in inside of HTML, they're now available as C, -sharp, uh, as C Sharp events. And so I think Blazor actually is probably the simplest way of building web because you need to know HTML, CSS, and .NET. Uh, you don't need to know a, a complete set of tools like Webpack and stuff to build these apps. Um, so I think that's going to actually, our, 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 one of our goals in .NET All Up is how do we reduce the number of things that you, you have to do. In fact, I'm embarrassed. And one of the things we, as a team, we all we sit around and talk about all the time is, why do we make this so complicated? So an, another one, I was showing in, in one of my demos, I showed a CS proj. Um, a .NET Core CS proj is normally about eight to 10 lines. If you actually look what a CS proj was before .NET Core, it was 160 lines. Mm -hmm. you, if you didn't have Visual Studio, you couldn't build a project because the thing was so complicated. Now the weird thing is, back if I, if I go back two, two years in time, we were doing .NET Core, um, some of the team was like, there's nothing wrong with this. This is not too complicated. You have Visual Studio. We're like, what if you don't? What if you're on a, a notepad with a editor? I mean, a notepad and a, and a command line tool. Yeah. Um, and so you sometimes, our, even our own teams, get so used to all the help this, this tool you, does for you that you forget how complicated the tech really is. Mm -hmm. And so as a .NET team all up, we're just trying to find ways to reduce the number of concepts, reduce the amount of things you have to know to, to get stuff done. So I, our, our whole job is honestly to make programming simpler, not harder. Um, but we, we, we've all, as we've added more tech over the years, they've made it harder. And this is, you know, I said, this is JavaScript, this is .NET, this is everywhere. Uh, but I think Blazor is going to be a, a step in making web programming for .NET easier than ever. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. I'm sure there will be a lot of happy developers out there, and so many people have been really looking forward to seeing you here. And Thank you very much for coming to Spain to speak to us. I am glad to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you.